Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Vision Zero press event in Denver. My name is Gina Espinosa Salcido. I am the Regional Administrator for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, and I'm pleased to welcome Mayor Michael Hancock of the City of Denver. Thank you, and thank you all for being here, and thank you for the two people who clapped. <laughs> I want to welcome the, uh, the National Highway Transit and Safety Administration and FHWA and Federal Transit Administration uh, and for their leadership here in Colorado and the city of Denver. Happy that the feds uh, are partners in our, our street safety work that we're trying to do here. I also want to acknowledge two very important departments here in the city of Denver. Uh, certainly Colorado Department of Transportation and their partnership, the perennial partnership uh, across the state and certainly here in Denver over the years with our efforts around Vision Zero. The other two departments, uh, our next department I want to say, say thank you to, of course, is the newly created Department of Transportation and for their tremendous efforts on the leadership of Euless Cleckley uh, on our efforts around Vision Zero. And we can't say enough about the men and women who wear the uniform every day and badges as part of our first responder apparatus here in Denver. And of course, that would be the best police department in the nation, the Denver Police Department and the leadership of <laughs> Chief Paul Pazin. We have made safety on our streets uh, a, a priority. And we've said from day one, it's the responsibility of all of us who are on the streets, um, from the city up to the state and federal governments and across the entire community. We all have a responsibility to be safe. DPD says there are top five factors that cause accidents on our streets. Speeding, distracted driving, which is one of my biggest pet peeves, aggressive driving, impaired driving, and of course, not wearing seat belts. The Department of Transportation here in the city and uh, Department of Transportation Infrastructure are designing streets to help make it safer for all of us in the city of Denver and making improvements to our multimodal uh, infrastructure to add protection for our most vulnerable users on the roadways. The Denver Police Department is working collaboratively across all city agencies and throughout the city to focus on education and enforcing traffic violations in areas uh, where data shows seriously bodily injury and fatal accidents are occurring in the city of Denver. We're working hard uh, to have greater safety in our streets with more measures implemented to reduce speeds and reduce conflicts between modes so fewer and fewer people until we reach Vision Zero. You know, unfortunately, today on December the 3rd, we can tell you that 2019 was not a good year for that. But we're not going to stop. We are committed to Vision Zero here in Denver, and we're committed to continue to make improvements to boost safety. But we cannot do this from a government point of view and be successful. Drivers, pedestrians, bicyclists, everyone has to play their role in keeping people safe. And that's why we've made uh, mobility improvements to our streets like 15th here behind us uh, with similar work coming to more streets very soon. This is a multi-agency, multi-levels of government as you'll see here today, multi-community-wide effort and a priority. Continuing our partnership with regional, state and federal transportation agencies to make sure our shared roadways like state highways and interstates are safer for everyone who travels in and around Denver will remain our top priority. Thank you all for being here and thank you for allowing me to be a part of it as well. Thank you so much, Mayor Hancock. Our next speaker today is Acting Administrator James Owens with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning and thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mayor Hancock, and thank you to the City of Denver, the Denver Vision Zero staff, the Department of Public Works, and the Denver Police Department the Denver Regional Council of Governments, the Colorado Department of Transportation, and my colleagues from the U.S. Department of Transportation, the Federal Transit Administration, and the Federal Highway Administration. NHTSA's top priority is safety on our roads, and we are strong supporters of the Vision Zero and Road to Zero movements. It cannot be acceptable that we lose more than 36,000 lives on our roads every year. Denver Vision Zero came about when the city announced in 2016 that street safety would not be compromised as new forms of mobility emerge. 
all road users, including bicyclists, motorcyclists, and pedestrians, should be able to attentively and safely share the road. We all have the responsibility to share the road. Those three groups that I just mentioned represent 56% of Denver traffic deaths so far this year. That is completely unacceptable. It's a horrific number. This echoes, unfortunately, what we're seeing nationwide. A rise in the number of fatalities and fatal crashes in urban areas, as well as increasing pedestrian and cyclist deaths. We were encouraged last year that our fatal crash numbers went down by 2.4% across the nation. That's 913 fewer deaths. Unfortunately, the numbers for pedestrians and cyclists went the other direction, and we need to take measures to stop that. Pedestrians are most at risk in urban areas. 80% of fatal crashes involving pedestrians occurred in areas classified as urban in 2017. And if you expand the urban boundaries by seven and a half miles, that captures 96% of, of pedestrian deaths. These numbers can and must change. Every fatal crash represents a life lost with lasting impact on families and communities that will never be the same. Our roads need to be safe for everyone using them, no matter if you're in a car, a scooter, a motorcycle, or walking. Every person should be able to go to work, go to, go to school, run errands, visit family, without having to fear for their safety. I'm proud to stand here with state and local leaders as we work toward one common goal, no more road fatalities. We can do so much more when we work together pool our resources, and share our knowledge. NHTSA is pleased to partner with states and local governments on programs like this. We support Colorado and the city of Denver's efforts to in install countermeasures to prevent crashes. When municipalities like Denver take action by championing engineering, education, and enforcement, we improve safety and make our communities better places to live. Our agency is actively working to move pedestrians and cyclists across the entire transportation system. We have numerous resources and tools available for advocates and law enforcement to address pedestrian and bicyclist safety in a data-driven manner. This week, we've partnered with the Denver Police Department to offer advanced infrastructure and enforcement training for its traffic unit. I thank Chief Pazin and his officers for proactively enforcing traffic laws to protect all road users in Denver. Combining education with tough laws and effective enforcement works. At the federal level, we are one U.S. DOT. We work together across our modes toward our common and uh, our common mission, our core mission, which is safety. NHTSA is working with the Federal Highway Administration to develop pedestrian safety initiatives, uniting some of our federal efforts and resources to more effectively tackle this problem. We appreciate this partnership and Administrator Nicole Nason's commitment to this important issue. We're also proud to partner with the Federal Transit Administration, whose Acting Administrator, Jane Williams, is here with us today. Thanks, Jane. We're working with her agency to help eliminate uh, rail grade crossing crashes and prevent railway right of way trespassing. Modes of transportation do not exist independently. Vehicles, pedestrians, buses, cyclists, and trains all interact every day. I appreciate the leadership and support of our secretary, Elaine Chow, who believes deeply in our safety mission. Her support for this life-saving work is invaluable. In closing, our message today is simple. In order to share the road, you need to pay attention because it may be the difference between life and death. Thank you. Our next speaker is Jane Williams with the Federal Transit Administration.
Thank you, and thank you, Mayor Hancock, for hosting us today in Denver uh, to help promote safety on our roadways and throughout our entire transportation system. It's great to be here with James Owens, our NHTSA Acting Administrator, as well as my colleagues from Federal Highway Administration and the teams from the Colorado Department of Transportation, Denver Public Works, and the Police Department, all of whom are collaborating with the U.S. Department of Transportation to engage with residents to promote safety. I'm also happy to see Doug Tisdale here joining us, who chairs the RTD board, and of course my team from Region 8, Cindy Tolerigger and Dave Beckhouse. Um, they manage our transit program here in Denver and throughout this region, and I can't say enough good things about their work here. Thank you all for joining us today. As you've already heard, transportation safety is Secretary Elaine Chow's number one priority at the department. And as her acting administrator at FTA, I'm here to highlight those safety concerns and solutions in our nation's public transportation system. At FTA, we are working to help our transit agency partners eliminate grade crossing incidents and bus collisions and prevent rail right of way trespassing to help keep the traveling public safe. I want to highlight the very real problem of grade crossing safety and how we can help motorists, bicyclists, and pedestrians cross tracks without harm. This event and others like it across the country are intended to remind each of us that whether we are traveling as a motorist, a cyclist, or a pedestrian, we need to pay attention, stay alert, and stay out of harm's way to stay alive. Safety underlines everything we do at FTA. In one of our largest safety initiatives, we issued our Public Transportation Agency Safety Planning Rule. And this rule requires transit agencies in urban areas to develop safety plans. One of the main principles of transit safety is to prevent incidents from happening before they occur. Last month, FTA reviewed transit agency safety plans and rank their top concerns. For rail agencies, the biggest concern was trespassing and the fatalities that resulted from those trespassers, followed by grade crossing collisions and passengers moving between trains. Those concerns reinforce our need to work on the grade crossing awareness issue together. For buses, transit agencies rank collisions with cars, pedestrians, and bicyclists as the top three concerns. Identifying and analyzing transit agency concerns as required in the agency safety plan regulation will help bus and rail agencies prioritize how to address those risks and better protect the traveling public and their employees. We are also encouraging improved safety by harnessing technical innovation in the industry. Much of the research we fund at FTA uses technology to improve transit safety efforts. For example, in Pierce Transit in Washington State is testing an automated collision avoidance system and a warning system on its buses to improve safety for cyclists and pedestrians, one way to address the top ranked concern of our bus transit agencies. Funded in part by a $1.6 million FTA grant, the collision avoidance system pairs detection technology with automated emergency braking that slows the bus when a pedestrian is detected in a crosswalk. They're testing this life-saving technology right now, and if it's successful, this will be a highlight in its effectiveness across the nation so that other agencies can determine whether to equip their buses with similar technology in the future. By supporting research into safety innovations, we help test the most promising strategies so that they may be deployed on America's streets. For decades, FTA has partnered with Operation Lifesaver to encourage safe behavior around tracks and trains. Operation Lifesaver produces training and educational materials to help transit agencies make the public aware of rail safety issues. In addition to rail safety campaigns, the organization also compiles best practices for safety education, including outreach to activities in schools, and disseminates them throughout the industry and to the general public. Working with them, we are addressing our number one goal to reduce injuries, fatalities among riders and members of the public. Thank you again for your commitment to safety on Denver streets and transit systems. Our partnership to address 
improve safety for travelers in Denver and throughout America will raise awareness and save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Jane. Our next speaker is Division Administrator John Cater with the Federal Highway Administration. Well, thank you, Gina. Well, thank you all for being here. Now, I appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to come together with my colleagues here to work together with so many partners to address pedestrian safety from all angles and with a unified approach. You know, it is recognized by Federal Highway, NHTSA, and FTA at the federal level, CDOT and the Colorado State Patrol at the state level, and cities like Denver, Fort Collins, and Boulder at the, at the local level, that there's more that must be done to improve pedestrian safety. The primary benefit of collaborating with other agencies is to combine our expertise towards a more, when we have a common goal, which in this case is, is improving safety, especially pedestrian safety. We create synergistic benefits by combining engineering with human behavior, education, public outreach, and enforcement. If our Federal Highway Administrator, Nicole Nason, was here, one of the first things that she would say is that for Federal Highway, the safety of pedestrians, bicyclists, and drivers using our sidewalks, streets, bridges, and highways is the number one priority of our agency. Nothing else tops that. I think almost everyone has been impacted by pedestrian safety issues in some form or fashion. We want to work together and change, change that problem. In Colorado, we, we exceeded 600 fatalities per year in each of the past three years, and we're likely to, to come in about that number again in 2019. Pedestrian fatalities have been increasing at a rapid rate and are unfortunately a reason why our overall fatalities are up here in Colorado. We are now at a point in Colorado where we are averaging roughly two pedestrian fatalities a week, every week of the year. That's roughly 100 a year. The same trend is playing out nationally. Pedestrian fatalities are up, and the overall fatality rate is flat or slightly declining. That just isn't acceptable. Collaboration is key as we all work towards a shared goal of reducing the number of fatalities and serious injuries we have on our roadways. Within Federal Highway, we are focused on pr promoting proven safety countermeasures. We are working with states and local communities to implement innovations in pedestrian safety through various methods. Federal Highway, we have a new program called Safe Transportation for Every Pedestrian or STEP for short, and, and the goal is to help transportation agencies address pedestrian challenges by promoting cost-effective countermeasures with known safety benefits. Some of these countermeasures are rectangular rapid flashing beacons, leading pedestrian intervals, crosswalk visibility enhancements, raised crosswalks, and pedestrian crossing and refuge islands. These engineering countermeasures markedly increase pedestrian safety. Many have been installed here in the Denver area and are already making a difference. For example, when we install a pedestrian hybrid beacon, known as the Hawk, at a crossing, like on Tamarack near Yale, or on Hamden at Verbena, pedestrian crashes will go down by over 70%. When we add a sidewalk, we see a reduction of over 90% in crashes involving pedestrians walking along that roadway. The rectangular rapid flashing beacon is a low-cost, simple warning device that notifies drivers when pedestrians are in the crosswalk. These devices have been installed at several places in the metro area. One is 30th and Downing. There are more planned, and those reduce crashes by over 80%. Just by providing that, that, that real-time notification as a pedestrian there in, in, the, in, the, uh, in the crosswalk. Even these simple countermeasures are incredibly effective. Just changing the timing of a traffic signal give, to give pedestrians a head start before the light changes is a simple act, but yet it leads to a 60% reduction in pedestrian vehicle crashes at those intersections. These types of improvements are the very much in the spirit of what we encourage localities to do through our STEP initiative and through the promotion of safety of proven effective countermeasures. It is important to view the characteristics of each location and determine the most effective solution for that location to enhance safety. At Federal Highway, we also support pedestrian and bicycle transportation through funding, policy guidance, program management, and resource development, as well as having a safety coordinator and a bicycle and pedestrian coordinator in each of our offices in each state. Here in Colorado, Dehira Gall, standing over here, is our, uh, is our safety coordinator, and Bill Haas is our bicycle and pedestrian coordinator here for Colorado. We're dedicated to putting the resources in place to change things for the better. All of us at Federal Highway and at the U.S. Department of Transportation are looking to use every tool we've got in at our disposal to reduce the number of fatalities. So with that, I want to thank you all for for being here, for being engaged, and uh, appreciate the work you do to protect the most vulnerable, vulnerable users on our roadways. So, thank you. Thank you so much to the City of Denver, and specifically the Department of Public Works for hosting us today. We're joined now by the Executive Director, Ulysses Cleckley.
Good morning. I'm Euless Cleckley, Executive Director of Denver Public Works, and our department is completely committed to making sure that we achieve zero fatalities on our streets here in the city and county of Denver. And we utilize our, our Vision Zero Action Plan, which was released back in 2017, which identifies fundamental principles to make sure that we have a mean, meaningful uh, Vision Zero commitment for our city. And they include the following, acknowledging that traffic deaths and severe injuries are preventable, that human error is inevitable, and that the transportation systems that we are building out are forgiving to those specific errors that might occur from human behavior. And that at a systems level approach, safety should be our primary focus internal to our department and should be embedded in every single aspect of how we deliver our projects, programs, and our services. And so as the mayor mentioned earlier, uh, earlier this year, we've gone through a significant reorganization in our department. And last month, the voters of Denver uh, supported charter changes to actually establish a new Department of Transportation and Infrastructure, which allows us to uh, more efficiently deliver projects in a quicker manner so we can meet our Vision Zero goals. So Denver residents are already seeing these changes due to the new structure. And you can see it on the streets of downtown and then our specific neighborhoods. And also on specific corridors that we consider high injury network corridors where we're experiencing a high number of traffic deaths. On those specific corridors, we're actively moving forward with reducing speed limits so we can have safe passage for those specific neighborhoods throughout the city and county of Denver. But we're also taking a look at making more quick uh, and low cost improvements to our roadways using uh, uh, more uh, uh, cost effective treatments such as uh, paint, bollards, curbs, and new traffic signals and additional signage to make the traveling motoring public move around in a safer manner. And so you can see some of those improvements reflected in the street directly behind me, which is 15th Street, where uh, we most recently in the past month made enhancements to the existing bike lane to create more barriers to make safe travel for cyclists. We actually uh, implemented a dedicated bus only lane at the same time, making sure that there's clear separation between the different modes traveling on one of our major arterials in the city and county of Denver and connecting major multimodal hubs, Civic Center Station to Union Station. And so you're gonna be seeing more of this in the city and county of Denver. We are committed to the mayor's leadership to build out 125 miles of bikeways over the next five years. And there's going to be more opportunities that we are going to reallocate and rededicate space uh, to make sure that our motoring public, cyclists and pedestrians be able to travel around in the safest manner possible. So we have multiple projects through our bond program that we're gonna be moving forward with, and we're gonna be uh, ensuring that we're doing this in a more proactive manner and a more efficient manner as we move forward to the future of the city and county of Denver and making sure that we are leveraging our new Department of Transportation and Infrastructure and partnering with all of our federal partners uh, and our state partners to achieve our Vision Zero goals. So thank you very much. Our next speaker will be Herman Stockinger from the Colorado Department of Transportation. Good morning. On behalf of CDOT, I wanna take this opportunity to applaud Denver and Mayor Hancock and their Vision Zero effort. In particular, the efforts they've undertaken to improve safety for our most vulnerable users of the system, particularly the pedestrians and, and uh, bicyclists. When I started looking into some of the statewide statistics surrounding some of our most vulnerable users of the system, I found a few that I'm compelled to share with you today. Compared to motorists, pedestrians are 30 times more likely to die if they're involved in a crash. Last year, we had 90 pedestrian fatalities. While less than 10% of Colorado's population routinely walks for transportation, and they walk far, far fewer miles than they drive, pedestrian fatalities still represent 14% of the fatalities in Colorado. And the fact is speed kills. A pedestrian hit by a vehicle going 40 miles per hour has only a 27% likelihood of surviving. 
However, slow that to 20 miles per hour and the likelihood of surviving increases to 87%. And compared to motorists, bicyclists, bicyclists are six and a half times more likely to die if involved in a crash. We had 22 bicycle fatalities last year, much higher than in any, in any previous year. Earlier this year, CDOT launched our Whole System Whole Safety program. Whole System Whole Safety takes a systematic approach to safety, making it a priority in everything that CDOT does, from our built environment to our awareness and education initiatives. The goal is to improve safety of Colorado's transportation network by reducing the rate and severity of crashes and improving the safety for all transportation modes, including again those are of our most vulnerable users. In addition to our whole system, whole safety effort, CDOT's just completed another round of our bicycle and pedestrian safety design classes. We're teaching engineers and planners how best to accommodate bicyclists and pedestrians. We've just completed another round of Colorado Downtown Street workshops, where we're working with local communities on making their main streets safer by improving walkability and bikeability. We're just starting the process of rewriting our CDOT roadway design guide to better incorporate walking, biking, and transit. This will go a long way to integrate modes in all the projects that we do. And with funding from NHTSA, we're reaching out to drivers through a mass marketing campaign to always yield to pedestrians, slow down, and stay off their phones. Finally, what we value most is the partnerships we have with our safety stakeholders, from our federal agencies, to city and state departments, to local transportation safety advocates. Together, I feel like we're making real progress that will ultimately save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Herman. Our final speaker today is Chief Paul Payson with the Denver Police Department. I think that was the good news that I'm uh, the last. We can get inside and get warmed. Uh, first and foremost, Vision Zero is a top priority, not only for the mayor, not only for the director of public works, uh, now De De Department of Transportation, but also for the police department and our many uh, state and federal partners. Uh, we are thankful for the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration who are here today and uh, they helped train our officers, our traffic operations officers, over the last two days on some advanced crash prevention through environmental design. Uh, we believe that utilizing uh, this new strategy or enhancing uh, the previous strategy is a way that we can increase the safety of all of the motoring uh, public, those that drive, those that walk, those that ride scooters and ride bikes. Um, the critical part in, in, in this uh, enhanced training is to teach our officers why a crash occurred, to identify the possible environmental factors that led to the crash, and then to work in a collaborative effort with the Colorado Department of Transportation and the Department of Public Works to fix those factors and prevent future accidents. Well, we uh, currently use data to deploy our officers in high crash areas. Uh, we use this method in order to protect our most vulnerable users. Uh, we will continue through partnerships, collaborations, and commitment to work to keep Denver City Denver's streets safe. Thank you very much.